Hello. I think we've got some people watching now. Is the way people to comment if they're watching? Fantastic. Leave a couple of minutes for some more people to tune in and then we'll make a start. Thank you, everyone. Just a couple more minutes to let some more people join us. Ah, oh, thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, feel free to comment uh, as we go. If you have anything to say, hello, hello everyone. Awesome. Just going to wait a couple more minutes to see if anyone else joins us, and then at ten o'clock we will make a start. Fantastic. Well, it's nearly 10 o'clock, so I think I'm going to make a start and people can, uh, anyone else who's waiting to join us, they can join in any time as we go. Awesome. So thank you everyone for joining us at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning for the first of our drama uh, workshop this week for Children's Mental Health Week. Uh, there'll be plenty more through the week. There'll be singing, dancing, yoga as well. But uh, this morning I'm going to be doing some drama games with you. My name is Jamie and we're going to be spending the morning being creative, creating some drama, doing some acting all in your living rooms, your bedrooms or wherever you might be uh, and later on I'm going to be reading you parts of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and we're going to be acting out some scenes from the story, meeting some of the characters, creating some of the settings as well and hopefully having uh, as much fun as possible but we're going to start with a bit of a stretch to get us all limbered up so if you can Raise your hands right up in the air for me, have a big stretch. And up on your toes. And back down again. Up on your toes. And back down again. Up on your toes. Big stretch, try and see how far you can reach up. And back down again. And one more time, up on your toes. And hold it. Feel a big stretch up your back, up the back of your legs and your shoulders. Big, big stretch. And then can you drop your wrists, drop your elbows, drop your arms, drop your head and roll down and touch your toes. If you can, touch your toes. And straighten up again. Straighten your legs and bend your legs. And straighten your legs and bend your legs. Straighten your legs. Bend your legs and then roll back up. There you go and give yourselves a nice little shake out. Can you take your wrists and start moving them around? Go forwards and then go the other way. Getting them nice and loose into your elbows. There's elbows moving. And the other way, elbows the other way. And then you move your shoulders back for me, big circles with your shoulders back, big circles. Hopefully feeling nice and limber now from the stretching, big circles with your shoulders. And then you can move them forwards.
And then if you can, one shoulder forwards, one shoulder backwards. If you can, maybe a bit trickier. Have a go. Just get those shoulders nice and loose. And if you can do that, then bring your shoulders up. Keep them up. And drop them back down again. And shoulders up. And back down again. And then shoulders up. Keep them up this time. Maybe give a little wave to the person next to you if you're with anyone else. With your shoulders up. Keep them up. And back down again and give it a nice big shake. Can you take your left hand for me and draw a circle? And then take your right hand for me and draw a square. Ooh. And then can you try and do both at the same time? If you can watch yourself, if you can see yourself on the screen maybe, it might be a bit easier. I mirrored in my screen, which makes it very, very tricky. I know it's already can do it. You are a circle with one hand and a square with the other. Oh no, oh no, not at all. Can you do that? Maybe pop in the comments if you can. If anyone can do that at home. Great, and then shake your arms out. Hopefully our arms are feeling nice and warmed up now. And we're gonna move on to our legs. If you can take your left leg for me and draw a circle with your toes. Uh, hello, St. Thomas Kensley Primary. Thank you for joining us. Circle with your toes on your right foot. And then can you draw a circle with your knee? So we're standing on one leg with our other foot drawing a circle with our toes from the knee. And then shake that leg out. Move on to your other leg, draw a circle with your toes. And then into the knee, getting your legs nice and stretched, nice and limber. So we're going to be using our bodies a bit later to create some parts of the story. Move around our legs. That's great. And then shake all your legs out. That's brilliant. Now, hopefully our bodies are feeling a bit more warmed up now. We're going to try and warm up our face muscles a bit because when we're doing our acting later, we're going to be using lots of facial expressions showing lots of characters in our faces and how they how they look, showing the emotions they might be feeling on their faces. So we need to warm up those muscles in our face. So if you can for me, imagine you've got a piece of bubble gum, any flavour bubble gum you like, your favourite flavour, and just pop it in your mouth for me and start giving it a chew. Start giving that bubble gum a bit of a chew. And then we're going to blow a bubble with it, just a small bubble to start off with. So keep chewing your bubble gum. And now I count down from three. As I count down, I want you to start blowing that bubble. You can show it with your hands like this, blowing it bigger and bigger. So three, two, one, and then suck it back in again. Keep chewing your bubble gum. That's great. And then can you take a, a second piece of bubble gum this time? And we're gonna pop that in as well. So now we've got two pieces in there, so we have to start chewing a bit harder, get those face muscles all warmed up, really have to chew that chewing gum, that bubble gum this time. And then can you blow another bubble for me that this bubble's going to be a bit bigger because you've got two pieces of bubble gum in there now. So I'm going to count down from three again as I do. We'll blow that bubble out bigger and bigger. So three, two, one. And then suck it back in again. There we go. Keep chewing those bits of bubble gum because now we're going to add a third piece of bubble gum. I'm going to pop that in there. So now you have to really chew really hard this time to get all those pieces of bubble gum all chewed up. And then you're going to blow one more bubble. And this bubble is going to be even bigger than the other two bubbles. OK, it's going to be a massive bubble. And this time you're not going to, it's going to be so big you can't blow it back in. It's going to pop everywhere. I count down from three again. Keep chewing. Keep chewing. And there you go. Three. There it goes, two, even bigger, one, and then pop. All over, oh, maybe it's all over your hands, all over your face. There we go, but hopefully now we've got our face muscles a bit more warmed up and our bodies a bit more warmed up as well, and we'll be ready to do some drama later on. But before we do that, to make things a little bit easier when we're 
devising drama at home because it can be a little bit trickier when you're maybe not around other people maybe you're not in a space that you're used to to come up with those uh, creative ideas I want to make things a little bit easier for you by getting you to gather some props the props can be really useful when we're coming up with drama they can really help spark off ideas when we're thinking about character or costume or setting and all those sorts of things uh, so I'm going to give you some categories and then you're going to have 30 seconds to find an object in your room or in your house uh, that feel, falls into one of these categories, okay? So, and when you've got your object, maybe you can pop it in the comments so we can all see what you've got as well. So for the first one, I'd like you to find for me something beginning with L, the letter L. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to time you 30 seconds to find something beginning with the letter L. Time starts now. Something beginning with the letter L. So I can play some music for you as well. Hope you can hear that. What's you looking? There might be a bit of a delay on the comments. So if I can't read out what it is that you found, I'll try and read out as soon as it comes through. Something beginning with the letter L. We've got just 10 seconds left. Did you manage to find anything beginning with the letter L in that 30 seconds? Let me know in the comments if you managed to. A leg. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Brilliant. Keep those comments coming. I'll try and read them out uh, as we go. I'm going to move on to the next thing now. Oh, I managed to get a lamp. That was my thing with beginning with the letter L. A lamp. I thought that could be a useful prop for later. Or lots of bendy, lots of movement you can do with it with a lamp. Let's go for the next thing. Maybe if you no, don't have access to all of these things, you can type in the comments what the best thing that you could that you think you could find would be, what you think a good prop would be. Lantern, that's a good one. Lunchbox, that's a great one as well. Leaflet, very nice. Laptop, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Okay, next, can you get for me the softest thing you can find? 30 seconds to find the softest thing, or maybe if you can think of the softest thing you can think of if you can't find something. So 30 seconds again for the softest thing. Time starts now. That for you. Awesome. Hello, year three, Riverside Primary School as well. Thank you for joining us. The softest thing. The time's halfway gone. We've got 15 seconds left. Something soft. Lego, that's a great one for Al. Lego will be useful. Nearly out of time, the softest thing. There you go, time's up. What did you manage to get? A teddy, yeah, that's a good one. I managed to get, I got my soft little monkey teddy. Yeah, cushion, lots of soft toys would be good. Dressing gown, yeah. Awesome. A couple of dressing gowns. They'll be great for, you can hang on to those for those props later. They might be really good for uh, costumes we might be doing later when we do some of the characters. The cat, oh, hopefully your cat can join in as we go along as well. Awesome. Okay, next one. Can you find for me the tastiest looking thing? The tastiest looking thing you can find. Doesn't it mean, doesn't it have to be something you can eat as long as it looks tasty? Something really tasty. I give you 30 seconds again for the tastiest looking thing. And the time starts now. Pillow, a flower, nice, lots of pillows. Pillows will be good props as well. There's lots you can do with that. Now looking for the tastiest looking thing. 30 seconds. Got 10 seconds left for the tastiest looking thing. Let me know in the comments when you've got something. Five seconds left. Two, one. Time's up. What did you manage to get? Something tasty. Fruit, lemon cake. Yeah, I got an apple. That was mine. Nice tasty apple. Chocolate bar. Yeah, you can't beat that really. Or brownies. Maybe you can. Brownies, yeah. Awesome. Keep those coming. I'm going to move on to the next one now. We've got a few more. About halfway through these. We want to get lots of props ready for later. Um, can you get for me now something beginning with B? 
something beginning with B is your next one. I give you 30 seconds again to find something beginning with B. Have a bit of background music whilst you're looking. And your time starts now. Peanut butter, that's, that's a very tasty thing. Big rolls, rabbit and all. Awesome, awesome. So now you're looking for something beginning with B. Remember to keep all these props handy when you've got them as well because we'll, we'll use them later. A bat, nice. So you've got the 10 seconds left for something beginning with B. Something beginning with B. Three, two, one. Time's up on that one. A banana, nice. Book, very good. I've got a bobble hat. It'd be good for a bit of costume later, maybe. Or I could use it for something else. You could move, spin it around. Maybe it can be a prop for a movement or an action. So much you can do with all of these props that are coming through a book. There's those you can do with that. A badge. Box, books, b-ball. Loads, loads of bees. Boxing glove. That would be a great one. Awesome. Okay, we've got three more left to go of these. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Can you find for me now the best thing to take to a desert island? You can only take one thing, the best thing you could take to a desert island. 30 seconds, off you go. Best thing. Loads of these, book, bottle, blue cap, box, bowl, box, a bus, wow. So now you can feel the best thing to take on a desert island. Got 10 seconds, best thing to take on a desert island. Five seconds. Time's up. What have you got to take on a desert island? I got my my headphones. Another good good prop maybe for moving about. Sun cream, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Drink, nice. Ooh. Awesome, Kilo's coming on, I'm going to move on to get the next few done so we can move on to the story in a bit. <laughs> uh, can you get for me now the thing that makes the best sound? Now this will be a useful one, something that makes the best sound. This is going to add a lot to our drama later if we've got something that we can add sound effects into. So you've got 30 seconds again, something that makes the best sound. Off you go. <laughs> Mini T-Rex, nice. Phone, yeah, phone definitely a very popular one. Water. <laughs> yeah, you son, you've already got your chocolate in the book. You're kitted out for the desert island. You've got 10 seconds left. It's something that makes the best noise this time. It makes the best noise. Uh, there's your time. Time's up for that one. Something that makes the best noise. Piano, that's a good one. I had, oh, where did I put mine? Another musical instrument, a harmonica. There you go. iPads get loads of sounds out of that. Scissors, good choice. Also, okay, keep those coming. This is the last one now. We'll move on and get the last one done. Can you get for me now something orange? <laughs> a hungry cat, yeah. Uh, okay, something orange is your last one. Can you find something orange? You've got 30 seconds. Off you go. Time starts now. Something orange. Ticking clock, something makes noise. Bop it. Oh, that's a good one. Sheep. Awesome. Dominus Rex. So, something orange for this one. Time's nearly up. This is your last prop you're going to be getting for later. Something orange. Time's up. What did you manage to get? Something orange. An orange, of course. Boulder. I got an orange jumper. I could use it maybe as a bit of costume later. It could be a cape or something, maybe. Something like that, or a scarf. Pencils. A frisbee, that's a great one. That's a really good one. Awesome. Orange mango. Nice. Llama. Awesome. An orange llama. Wicked. Cool. So hopefully now you've got 
near you a whole range of props uh, that we can be using to bring to life parts of the story uh, as we go through Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I'm just going to give a quick overview of the story for anyone who might not know what happens in it. I'll give a little bit of an overview so we all know uh, vaguely what happens in the story and then we're going to meet some of the characters and read through some of the events. Okay, so Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a story written by Roald Dahl, the children's author, and it's about a young boy who wins a golden ticket to visit an amazing chocolate factory and along the way he meets lots of interesting characters, sees lots of amazing adventures and eats an awful lot of chocolate as well. Okay, so it's about a young boy going to a big factory that makes lots of chocolate and meeting lots of interesting characters. So first thing we're going to do is meet some of the main characters in Charlie the Chocolate Factory and have a go at bringing them to life there at home. So if you could stand up in your space for me, wherever you might be, you might be in your living room or your bedroom or wherever, and just start walking around the space and seeing how much of it you can move, what sort of movement you can move around the space. And as you do that, I'm going to introduce you to our first character, who is Willy Wonka. And Willy Wonka is the owner of Charlie and uh, owner of the chocolate factory in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. So as you walk around the space, I'm going to give you some descriptions of Willy Wonka and just start to have a think about how someone who is described like this might move around, how they might walk, how they might stand. Just have a little bit of a think. So this is the first description that Roald Dahl gives of Willy Wonka. He says that Willy Wonka is the eccentric owner of the extremely prosperous chocolate factory. So this is someone who's very eccentric, so maybe they're very colourful, they're very confident, and also their factory is very prosperous, so they're very successful. So how might someone stand who's very successful? They might stand up very straight, maybe, with their chest out. If they're eccentric, how might they look? Might they be smiling? Might they be laughing? How might they walk as well? Would they walk in a, in a funny way? Would they walk very straight, maybe very proper? Have a think about that as you're walking around your space. Eccentric is a good word to focus on. How might someone who's eccentric walk around? And I'll give you a few more descriptions of Willy Wonka and you can add these into your movements now. So this is a description of how Willy Wonka dresses, okay? So Willy Wonka wears a tailcoat and a top hat with green trousers, grey gloves and a cane, okay? So he's dressed very smartly. That might help you as you're walking around the space. He's dressed very smart. A tailcoat, so a big coat, a big jacket that comes all the way down to his knees. Green trousers as well, so he's very colourful. And a cane, maybe you, one of your props that you found earlier you could use as a cane. How would someone walk? Would they be, maybe they're twirling their cane, maybe twirling it around, maybe they're using it to help them walk. Have a think about that as you're walking around your space as well. I can give you uh, a couple more descriptions now that might help you. Uh, he is described by Roald Dahl as having a goatee and has marvellously bright eyes. And that's an interesting one, marvellously bright eyes. How might you show that on your facial expression? Someone who's got very bright eyes, how might that show on their face? Maybe there is a big smile, maybe, maybe they're laughing. Uh, and having a goatee as well, how could you work that into it? Now, hopefully you've got uh, enough descriptions there that you can maybe start to think of a gesture that Willy Wonka might do maybe a movement that he does it could be something to do with his cane maybe his goatee something to do with the fact that he's very colorful and very eccentric maybe there's a a movement or a gesture that you can think of that Willy Wonka might do to help bring the character to life feel free to pop it in the comments if you think of anything anything Willy Wonka might do maybe he's stroking his goatee or maybe he's doing something with his cane let me know if you come up with anything and I'll give you a final description now of Willy Wonka's voice, okay? This is how Roald Dahl describes Willy Wonka as talking. And this is something you can think about, maybe start to think about how you might speak as Willy Wonka as you're walking around the space. He has a high and fluty voice and a face alight with laughter. So he's very happy, he's very cheerful, high and fluty, so his voice is quite musical maybe. Maybe have a go at giving a bit of a, a laugh in that way that Willy Wonka might do maybe bit of a high and fluty laugh, possibly. Uh, and he's also got quick little jerky movements like a squirrel. Okay, so that might help you if you're having, if you're struggling to think of a movement for it. It's very jerky and uh, very quick. So maybe there's an idea that you could come up with there for a movement, possibly. It might help you with your movement, maybe stroking the goatee. He's very, very quick at stroking it like that because he's very excited. And as you're walking around 
as Willy Wonka. I'm going to just count down from five. When I get to zero, I want you to freeze in a, a Willy Wonka pose. Imagine there was a Willy Wonka statue maybe outside the chocolate factory. How might Willy Wonka be standing uh, in that uh, on the, in that statue? What pose might Willy Wonka be pulling? Okay, I'm going to count down from five. When I get to zero, freeze in your Willy Wonka pose. So five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Hope you've got some good Willy Wonka poses there. He's giving out chocolate. Yeah, that would be a good little gesture that Willy Wonka could do. Giving is very kind as well, very generous, giving out chocolate to the children. Okay, and once you've had that Willy Wonka freeze for a little bit, can you shake it all out? Shake it all out and we're going to move on to the next character. So the next character we'll be looking at is Charlie Bucket. Now, Charlie is the title character of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, and he's the main character of the book. So we follow his story all the way through. And here are some descriptions of Charlie that you can think about, again, as you're moving around your space, thinking about how to become the character. So Charlie is described as little Charlie Bucket throughout the whole book. Now, we don't know if this is because that's how old he is or because he's very small. It's probably both. So this is a very different character to Willy Wonka, whereas Willy Wonka was very confident and stood very straight. Charlie Bucket is maybe a bit quieter, maybe he's a little bit shy as well. So have a think about walking around your space as someone who's very quiet and very shy, maybe not quite as confident as Willy Wonka. Try and get into that different sort of character. Maybe how might you be standing if you're very shy? Would you stand with your head up? Or would you maybe stand with your head down? How might you walk? Would you walk quickly? Would you walk slowly? Have a think about those things as you're walking around your space. And I'll give you a few more descriptions of Charlie. He's described as very quiet and he whispers all the time as well. So maybe you could think about some things that Charlie might say, he might whisper to himself uh, as you're walking around, maybe sort of mumbling very meekly, maybe, but very polite as well. Roald Dahl also says that um, Charlie, even when he's marvelling at things, he still whispers as well. So he's always quiet, even when he's excited by all the amazing things in the factory, he's still very quiet. Maybe you can think of a gesture for Charlie as well that he might be doing. So think, what might this boy, he's very quiet, but he's very curious as well. He asks a lot of questions uh, and he's very kind as well. Maybe there's a gesture that he could be doing at the same time as you're shuffling around. Let me know if you can think of any. And once again, I'm gonna count down from five. And um, when I get to zero, can you freeze as Charlie Bucket in a sort of Charlie Bucket pose? He might be asking a question maybe, or he might be listening very carefully to what Willy Wonka's saying. Have a think about all these different things. Yeah, we'll get on. We'll get on to the uh, uh, Oompa Loompas in a bit, definitely. Uh, so, can you? I'm going to count down from five. When I get to zero, can you freeze as Charlie Bucket? So, five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Strike a good Charlie Bucket pose. Hopefully we've got some good ones there. And then shake it all out once you've had that pose for a little bit. Shake it all out. And we're going to meet our final main character of the story. So this character is Grandpa Joe. Now, Grandpa Joe is Charlie's granddad. And he is bedridden at the start of the story. So he spends all his time in bed. But as soon as he finds out about the golden ticket, he leaps out of bed and can't wait to join Charlie on their tour of the factory. So let's start off thinking about a character who's very old and frail. So this is again a very different character. How might you walk around the space if you're very old and frail? Maybe you're using a walking stick to help you walk. Maybe you're bent over shuffling very slowly. Have a think about these things. And I'm gonna try something a little bit different for this one. I'm gonna count down from 10. And when I get to zero, I want you to imagine that you've just been told by Charlie that you've got the golden ticket and you're going to the chocolate factory and then you can leap up with joy and freeze like that when we get to zero. So keep shuffling around as Grandpa Joe, maybe you've got your walking stick and your back like that. Keep shuffling around and I'll count down 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and freeze freeze and jump in the air as Grandpa Joe finding out he's got the ticket and hold that freeze for a little bit and then you can shake it all out 
shake it all out, and we're going to move on and start off with the story. So, as we go along with the story, I'm going to be reading out bits of it, and we're going to be stopping at a few points to act little bits out and do little activities and little actions that will help bring the story to life. But you are welcome to act out as much as the story as you want at home. If I read out anything and you think, oh, that sounds like a great bit I want to act out, then you go for it. Maybe let me know in the comments there uh, if there's any bits that you really want to act out. And we will make us make a start. So years prior to the beginning of the story, Willy Wonka opened the largest chocolate factory in the world, but spies stole his recipe. So he eventually closed the factory to the public. Then the factory began to run again, while still closed to the public, with the aid of mystery workers. And it had been running that way for the past 10 years. So to start off, I thought we could maybe come up with a little action and a movement that might be part of the factory. And now you can do this using some of your props from earlier. Maybe have a look at your props, see if there's any that move in interesting ways that you can make an interesting movement out of and add a sound to that could be part of the factory. I'll give maybe an example with my lamp. This could be maybe stamping down on something. If you manage to think of anything, maybe pop in the comments what your part of the factory might be doing. Maybe what, what chocolate is it making? What part of the sweet is it making? What sound does it make as well? Have a play around with your props. Could do one with my headphones maybe. It could be a beeping sound. Beep, 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 beep. Something like that. Have a play around with your props and see if you can find any movements that might be part of the factory. Let me know if you can think of any. What else? Be twer something twer spinning round maybe, a spinning round part of the factory. Have a play around with your props, make some noises. Maybe if any of your props can make a noise as well, you can have a go. So hopefully you're having a bit of a play around with your props, seeing what you can do, what noises you can make. And I'm gonna move along with the story. And we're gonna meet some more characters in a minute as well, have a go at acting those out. So. One day, Mr. Wonka decided to allow five children to visit the factory. Each child would win a lifetime supply of chocolate after the factory tour. The children have to find one of five golden tickets hidden inside the wrapping paper of random Wonka bars. So now we're going to meet the other children that find these golden tickets along with Charlie and get to go to the factory. So the first character we're going to meet is Augustus Gloop. So once again, can you be standing up in your space, maybe walking around a little bit as well as I give you some descriptions of Augustus Gloop and you can maybe start to become that character in the space. So here is how Augustus is described. Augustus is described as greedy, very greedy. So maybe you can start with the facial expression for this one. How might someone who's very greedy look? How might they look in their face? Maybe they're scrunched up, maybe they're very determined to eat as much food. How might they look in their face? And also he's described as enormously fat as well. So have a think about walking around your space with your massive fat belly. How might you walk if you're massive and fat? You might be waddling around. Yeah, it might be walking very slowly, very heavy. Okay, maybe think, can you think of a gesture for Augustus Gloop as well? Oh, that's a great one for your prop. boxing glove, putting the squares into the chocolate. Good idea. I bet you, could, you bet you thought of a good sound for that as well. I can, I can imagine a good sound for that. That's awesome. Uh, and again, I'm going to give you a countdown and you can freeze as Augustus Gloop. If you can think of a gesture as well, you could freeze doing that. Maybe, I don't know, stuffing food into his face, maybe, or demanding even more food. I'm going to count down from five, five, four, three, two... One and freeze. There's Augustus Gloop with your big belly, maybe. And then shake it all out. And we'll meet the next character. The next character is Violet Beauregard, she's called. Now, Violet chews gum all of the time. So, like we were doing for our warm up where we were chewing our bubble gum, 
let's think about maybe being Violet this time and chewing her gum as well. But there's something different with Violet. Violet's been chewing her gum for three months straight. So how might you be chewing gum if it's been three months old? You might be chewing really hard, maybe. It's really tough because it's three months old. Have a think about that chewing. I'll give you a few more descriptions of Violet. She boasts all the time. She's very boastful and very arrogant. So have a think about how someone who's very arrogant might stand. How might they hold themselves? Maybe you've got your arms folded like that. Maybe her hands on her hips. Was the, Violet was the winner of the gum competition. Maybe you could freeze as Violet being uh, the winner of the gum competition. How might she react when she's won the gum competition? Once again, I'm going to count down from five and then you can freeze as Violet. Maybe with a gesture, maybe she's got her hands on her hands on her hips or her arms folded. Think of something like that. Five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Freeze as Violet. Awesome. And then you can shake it all out and we'll meet the next character. The next character to win a golden ticket was Veruca Salt. Now, Veruca is very spoilt. Veruca, she demands everything from her parents, absolutely everything, uh, and she always wants to get her own way. So have a think about how much the facial expression again, someone look if they're very spoilt. Maybe you can think of a gesture as well that she can do, but to make things a little bit easier for this one, I'm gonna give you a line that uh, Veruca says in the story, and maybe you can practice saying that at home in your best spoilt voice. So the line that she says, all the time at the start of the story is, I want a golden ticket. I want my golden ticket. That's what she says. She's demanding a golden ticket from her parents. So how much, and she wanted a squirrel as well. That's true later in the story. So maybe you can be saying, I want my golden ticket or I want a squirrel. How might someone say that who's very spoiled? How might they stand when they say it? Say it. Think of a gesture or an action that she might do when she's saying it as well. You could be stamping your feet maybe as you say it. You could be pointing as well. Have a go. Once again, I'll count down from five and then you can freeze as Veruca Salt. So five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Freeze in your best Veruca position. Maybe your hands on her hips, stamping your feet. That's awesome. And then shake it all out and we'll meet one more character from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is the last boy to find a golden ticket and his name is Mike TV is his name and Mike TV watches television all the time. Roald Dahl says that his eyes are glued to the screen so again think about the facial expression how might someone look if their eyes are glued to the screen all of the time what sort of face might they be pulling maybe think of the face that you pull when you're watching television for too long how how might you be looking then when you've been staring at the screen uh, he's also Mike, he really likes cowboy TV programs. So he's got a belt covered in 18 pistols. So a big belt covered in toy guns. So maybe you've got a prop that you could use to show this. Have a think about how you might walk around with 18 pistols uh, hanging from you. Keep walking around with these big belts maybe, or big belts with all these pistols on you. How might you walk around? And once again, I'll count down from five and then strike a pose as Mike TV. So five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Freeze as Mike. Awesome. And then you can shake it all out. And we're going to carry on with the story. Now, there's some bits in here that you can act out uh, at home as we go along. I might get, point out some bits that you could possibly act out uh, there at home. So once all the children arrive at the factory, they see that the factory is full of strange and fantastical rooms, including a chocolate mixing room that looks like a huge garden where everything is made of chocolate and there's a chocolate lake in the middle. So maybe you can imagine what it's like to step into this chocolate garden full of everything made of chocolate. You could maybe get into it, you could close your eyes and then open them. When you open your eyes, imagine that you're in this chocolate garden <laughs> that was Augustus Gloop, the fat one. I think we covered him right at the beginning, Augustus, uh, but he'll be showing up later in the story as well. So imagine you're in the chocolate garden. 
I'm going to read out some of the amazing uh, chocolate inventions that are in the garden, and maybe you can act out uh, eating those at home. So there are lickable wallpaper, glow-in-the-dark lollipops, and cavity-filling caramel. So how might you be eating some of those uh, lickable wallpaper? And maybe you can imagine holding a glow-in-the-dark lollipop as well. Have a think about those as I carry on with the story. So. At the factory, there is also a research development room with dozens of complex machines designing new forms of chocolate all the time. I'll read out some of these for you. Uh, there was a nut sorting room with an army of trained squirrels that sort the good nuts from the bad. Maybe you could be acting out the squirrels sorting the nuts going through your props possibly, what the good nuts and the bad nuts I tend to be a little squirrel. There was a TV studio like room with a giant Wonka Vision camera, which can teleport chocolate bars uh, into people's homes through their televisions, and a special glass elevator that takes the group from room to room. It can go sideways, long ways, and any ways you can think of. So there's a few things you can act out maybe. Maybe you can step into the glass elevator, have a look at all the control panels, practice going from side to side, up and down as well. Uh, but we're going to start wrapping up the story soon, so I'm going to let you know what happens to all of the children at the end of the story. And there's a couple of these that we can act out at home, okay? So first off, Augustus falls in the chocolate lake and gets accidentally sucked up and taken away. Next, Violet, she's the one who was chewing all the gum all the time, she ignores Willy Wonka's advice and tries some of his three-course dinner gum. When she reaches the blueberry pie dessert, she swells up like a blueberry and has to be rolled away. So maybe we can act this out. Maybe take a piece of your three-course dinner gum. Imagine you've got one in your hand. Have a think about what courses it might be. Maybe your favourite meal, favourite meals. And then pop it in your mouth and start giving it a chew. And you'll start getting through the first course now. Mine might be nice bread and butter, maybe. To start you off, give it a nice chew. And then move on, maybe it's roast dinner for the main course, as you keep chewing, nice roast dinner. And then when you hit the blueberry pie dessert, you're going to start swelling up, just like Violet, okay? So keep chewing, you can start to taste that blueberry now, and maybe you start getting bigger and bigger, start swelling up. How might you look on your face, start to look a bit worried maybe, as you're getting bigger and bigger, start swelling up. And your face maybe start blowing out your cheeks. Would you get bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger? And then finally she gets rolled away. Maybe you can roll yourself away off the screen, just like Violet does in the story. As we'll move on to the next one. Next is Veruca Salt. So, while in the nut sorting room with the squirrels, Veruca Salt, after failing to get her father to buy a sorting squirrel, is deemed a bad nut by the squirrels and thrown into the garbage chute. And finally, Mike TV tries to use the chocolate television machine and is shrunk down by the special camera till he is just six inches tall. So let's have a go at acting that out. Imagine that you're standing there as Mike TV and the big camera's pointing at you, the big shrinking camera. I'm going to count down from five. When I get to zero, the camera's going to switch on and you're going to shrink straight down into Mike TV at six inches tall, okay? So imagine it's pointing at you, five, four, three, two, one, and shrink right down, shrinking down, shrink right down, keep shrinking, and maybe when you get to that small, you can have a practice at speaking in your best shrunken down voice. How might someone sound if they're shrunk down to just six inches tall, down into their shrunken, shrunken voice? And then you can pop back up again and shake it all out as we finish off with the story now, okay? So after all of that and all of the accidents that happened to those children, Charlie is the only child left. And it's the one that Willy Wonka likes the most. So he gets to win the main prize, that is, which is that he will one day take over the factory from Willy Wonka. So Wonka, Charlie, Grandpa Joe all board the glass elevator, which bursts through the roof as they float through the air. They witness the other four children leaving the factory. 
So this is what has happened to the other four children as they leave the factory. So the pipe has made Augustus, remember Augustus fell in the lake and he got sucked up through the pipe? Now the pipe has made him all thin and covered in chocolate. So have an imagine walking around your space is all thin and covered in chocolate. Maybe you're all pressed up because you've been in the pipe and you're all wet and covered with chocolate as well. Maybe you have a go at that. As I move on to describe what happened to Violet. Violet is drained of blueberry juice, but her face is all purple. So imagine, remember when Violet was rolled out in the big space, maybe you can have a go at acting that out as well. Rolling around as a big ball of blueberry, just like Violet. There we go. And Veruca and her parents, they got thrown down the garbage chute with the squirrels and they emerge covered in garbage, garbage and rubbish from the rubbish chute. So maybe have a think about walking around your space, but you're covered in, covered in, oh, pardon me, covered in rubbish and maybe you're really smelly as well. Maybe they're really smelly as they're walking around in, this, in your space at home there. And finally, Mike TV, who got shrunk down into just six inches, he's now been stretched out again, but he's been overstretched. So he's now 10 feet tall and all lanky and floppy as well. So maybe have a go at walking around. Imagine that you're 10 feet tall and all your limbs are flapping about in the breeze because you're too big. Walk around as Mike TV and I'll count down for five again and maybe you can freeze as one of those four that we've just been through. You could be Augustus stuck in the pipe or you could be Violet as a big blueberry, Veruca and her parents all covered in rubbish and finally Mike TV all stretched out with his floppy limbs 10 feet tall. I'll count down and you can freeze as one of those. So five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Awesome. And then you can shake all that out as we just reach the last bit of the story. So I'll just let you know what happens right at the very end. So Wonka does honour the terms of each golden ticket holder. So all of the children get a lifetime supply of Wonka chocolate. And as each child drives away with a truck full, truck full of chocolate, Willy Wonka, Grandpa Joe, all travel in the elevator to Charlie's house to fetch the rest of Charlie's family and tell them the good news. And there we go. We managed to get to the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And hopefully you've managed to act out some bits of it at home. Uh, as well. We got to meet all the interesting characters and act out little bits of the factory, act out all the amazing uh, sweets and chocolates that Roald Dahl describes in the book and we managed to make all the way through. So well done everyone, you can give yourselves a big round of applause. Big round of applause. Awesome. And uh, thank you, thank you very much for joining us. There will be more uh, workshops throughout the rest of the week. Uh, there'll be a uh, dance workshop and a yoga workshop um, and singing and poetry writing as well. So be sure to check those out. And thank you again. Thank you very much for joining in, everyone. Uh, it's awesome. So thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye.